And uh, welcome to Reminiscences with uh, Professor Idris Mohammed, who is a medical doctor, researcher, lecturer, and administrator. I think his last full-time job was the provost of uh, School of Medical Sciences at the University of Medjugorje. But it's hard to see any committee that has to do with medicine at the national or state level without seeing his name, whether it's on immunization, HIV, and even latest uh, COVID uh, epidemic. Mm -hmm. Professor Idris Mohammed is a winner of the equivalent of our Nobel Prize, which is the Nigerian National Order of Merit. I believe in 2007, and uh, for that reason, he's one of the elite medical doctors, professors actually from the University of Ibadan, whose name is on the wall of fame, as they call it. And I, when I took a uh, look at the list, uh, it's quite clear that he's one of the few northerners, if I, perhaps the only one from, from in, in that list. Uh, so he's a professor of medicine and a consultant physician who has worked in many hospitals, especially teaching hospitals in Zaria, in uh, Meduguri, and now I think he's just an honorary professor at the University of Gombe. Prof, welcome to the program. And I start with the, your early days in Gombe. I don't know why you born and Akada from, 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 from your childhood, because it seems <laughs> like you had all the laurels. How was early school for you? Is there any particular advantage you had uh, in schooling, or is just the normal school we all went to? Well, thank you very much. I don't think I had any particular advantage as such, uh, except that uh, I think I've been born lucky, because uh, it was even by chance that I managed to be admitted to the junior primary school in Gombe because I had earlier been sent to nomadic Fulanis in the bush to learn for a full day. But I only came home to, to see them after a few months. When on my way out of the house, I saw some two men coming, uh, one Englishman and uh, uh, a house summon. And the house summon called me to say, Batura Yate Kakirga Dagadezu Agoma. And as soon as I started, I have you, Ukufuri, write it down. Mm. Then I heard him say, Primary school. Mm. So the man explained to me that uh, the white man has said you will be admitted in primary school. Mm. And that's how my education started. So I attended the... So it was not your parents who took you. Yeah, you they just saw you in this. They just saw me. I was trying out to of the house to go mm. back to the nomadic Fulanis. Mm. And they saw me, and I saw them coming, and they came to me. So it wasn't planned. Mm. I was just lucky. Mm. So that's how I entered uh, primary school. Mm. So from junior primary school, I went to senior primary school, both in Gombe. Mm. From where I went to the provincial secondary school in Bauchi. Mm. And uh, after the West African school certificate, I was admitted to Barewa College for my higher school certificate, mm. uh, after which I managed to get admission to the University of Ibadan to study medicine. Did you choose Ibadan deliberately, or is just something that is only available? Well, at the time, there were only two medical schools in Nigeria. Ibadan that was established in 1948, mm. and uh, Lagos that was established in 1962. Mm. Both of them offered me admission in 1964. Mm. But there are no prizes for getting which one I chose. Mm. I went to Ibadan. Mm. How was your experience in Ibadan as a young northerner from Gombe? Mm -hmm. The initial experience was traumatic, mm. quite honestly. Mm. First of all, it was a strange land for us. Mm. I had never been gone beyond uh, Kaduna. Mm. 
as at that time. Mm. So I had never come across people who are not of House of Lani stock, mm. except the minorities around Gombe, uh, the current Bauchi state, or mm. current Gombe state, mm. or Bauchi state, the mm. old Bauchi state. Mm. So going to Ibadan at that time in 1964 as a, as a northerner mm. was problematic mm. because at that time uh, there was polarization mm. even though it's not as manifest as it is today. Mm. But the most traumatizing thing was the first day at the university mm. when we were introduced and uh, one of the professors addressed us, mm. all of all the new admissions to the university in Trenchard Hall. Mm. And among the things he said is that uh, among you, there are some people who were admitted from Northern Nigeria. Mm. These students, did not pass any examinations, but were admitted on the orders of the premier of Northern Nigeria, Sir Ahmadu Bello. This is a professor says? So. Yes, and he said, and the, the disturbing thing is that among them are some people who want to study medicine. <laughs> I hope they know that we don't teach medicine in Arabic. So there were only two of us from of House of Learning Stock, me and uh, uh, now Professor Abdul Ibrahim, who was from Azare. Mm. And Abdul was so, so, so angry mm. that when we came out, he said, we must go and publicly uh, protest. Mm. And I said to him, no, the best answer to this man, mm. whose name I can't remember now, mm. is for us to finish and graduate as doctors in this mm. place. Mm. So you must be patient for the next five years. Mm. So I can't wait for the next five years. I said, but you have to. Mm. So seeing that I was not keen, mm. he dropped the idea. Mm. And uh, we graduated. We never repeated any subject mm. or any paper. Mm. But how was student life? How were, you, how were you treated by your peers, by your colleagues? Our colleagues have been, were pretty nice. Mm. In fact, as you know, it, there was trouble in Western Nigeria from 19, in fact, from 1961, mm. but mostly from 63 and 64 and 65 mm. up to 1966. Mm. So when there was, uh, during the Western crisis, mm. which led to a declaration of a state of emergency, mm. We were particularly vulnerable, and our Yoruba friends advised that we shouldn't go to town without them, mm. and we shouldn't dress like we are dressed now. Mm. So they protected us, mm. and uh, if they had any information that uh, people were coming to attack us, they came either to take us away or to stay with us. And uh, of course, it wasn't difficult for us to change our dressing code. Mm. In any case, we didn't have many uh, Northern Nigerian dresses with us. We usually uh, put on shirts and trousers. Mm. How many of you were there from, from the North at that period? Medicine, you said I, there were I, two of I, you? I think, yeah. yes, I mm. think either 10 or 11. Mm. Uh, the other two, mostly from Kwara and the old, uh, uh, no, Kwara, the mm. President Kogi and, mm. uh, yes, President Kogi and Kwara, because mm. the old Kwara included uh, Kaba province. It yes. used to be Iloren and Kaba provinces. Right. Yep. Mm. Do you remember some of those classmates of yours in Ibadan? Yes, I do. Um, mm. Although quite a few of them, of us, mm. have departed the world. Mm. But there are, we celebrated our 50th year of graduation a few years ago mm. in Ibadan. Mm. And uh, we had a, a reunion, mm. uh, opened a WhatsApp uh, uh, portal mm. in which we get, uh, we get to exchange views among mm. ourselves. Mm. I think about half of us are still alive. Mm. Unfortunately, 
um, yeah, there are three of us alive from mm -hmm. Northern Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Abdul Ibrahim, mm -hmm. Professor Albert Anjorin, who is at Elorin, mm -hmm. and myself. Uh, I don't know where the others are. Here you are by 1969, you are a brand new medical doctor from, from Gombe. What, 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 what happened next? <coughs> well, <coughs> what happened next uh, was also unexpected. Mm. I was selected to do my house job at Ibadan. Mm. I think out of uh, four of us who graduated, well, I mean, four northerners, mm. 20 of us uh, graduated that year from the University of Ibadan. All together? All together. All together, 20. And uh, yes, and uh, UCH could only employ so many. Mm. And uh, Abdi Ibrahim and myself were among the, the, the few mm. that they employed. Mm. But we graduated in June. By November, there was Hajj. And uh, at that time, the, I, was, I, was, um, I was halfway through my house job. No, mm. not even quite halfway. Mm. I was selected to be among the milit doctors, uh, the medical personnel looking after pilgrims mm. from November through January to February. Mm. I spent three months in Saudi Arabia mm. as one of the five, only five, at that time, there was only one medical team for the whole country. Mm. And among that team were only five doctors. Mm. And uh, I was the most junior, of course, mm. because I hadn't even completed my house job. Mm. And I hadn't been fully registered by the Medical and Dental Council. Mm. But anyway, I was included in the team. I don't know how the selection was made. Mm. So I spent three months in, mm. in Saudi Arabia. Mm. That was my first act. Yeah. Coming back to Ibadan, um, I think there was the civil war that did not end till 1970. That's right. Soon after I was registered, mm. after the house job, there was no national service then. Mm. I, was, I was posted to the war front. Mm. I was conscripted to the Nigerian army mm. and given the rank of field captain mm. and posted to uh, Agbo, mm. near Asaba, mm. where I was the first casualty receiving officer. Mm. Imagine a young doctor being sent to the war front mm. and being the first to receive casualties. Mm. Yeah, but well, the civil war still raging then and there were really casualties coming There were casualties, yes, mm. yes. Because this was 1970. It was almost the end of the civil war. Yes, but mm. I went, I think I went around August. Mm. The Civil War did not end until near December, I mm, think. Okay. So, but among one of the, among the, uh, the commander, the military, proper military commander, mm. who was in Abbo then, happened to have been my very, very close friend and classmate. Mm. Uh, even though he attended provincial secondary school, Yola, mm. while I was in Bauchi, we took school certificate the same year. Mm. But before then, we were playing hockey for our respective schools. Mm. And uh, we had made friends, we had become friends by 1958. Mm. And indeed, we went to the, among the things that happened after, I mean, before I even went to university, we went to Lagos to witness Nigeria's independence mm. with him mm. in 1960. No, nominated by your schools. Sorry? Nominated by your schools? Yes, yes. yes. I was nominated schools. from Bauchi. He mm -hmm. was nominated from Yola. Mm. And by chance, we met in Kaduna mm. and uh, we reviewed, renewed our friendship. We mm. were the smallest in the contingent from northern Nigeria going to Lagos. Mm. So we naturally uh, stayed together. Mm. Yes, who is mm. now chairman of the Northeast Development Commission. Mm. So, which was your first civilian? medical job then, um, after the civil war is over. Yes, why, why? I, I, be, I became, I was, after finishing the house job, I was appointed senior house officer at UCH. So I remained Still in Ibadan. So Ibadan really 
yeah. kind of adopted you. Well, after the sort initial. of, sort of. <laughs> Yeah. Sort of. Mm. And when I finished senior house officer job, they gave me a registrar's appointment. In Ibadan? In Ibadan. Mm. And it was in the middle of that registrarship, in fact, the first six months, mm. that my boss, the late Professor Akin Kube, mm. who died just over a year and a half ago, mm. someone me to say, Idris, would you like to go to the UK to specialize in medicine. Mm. I said, yes, sir. So one month later, he called me to say, I have found you appointment as a clinical assistant to Professor Mitchell mm. in Nottingham. And he said, you can report uh, within one month. Mm. So I had to find sponsors because he only found me the appointment. Mm. But by by the grace of Almighty Allah, I went to, I don't know how I got myself in the government house in Ibadan. Mm. And Musa Osman, who was governor, military governor of the Northeast at yes. that time, yes. happened to have been there. So someone introduced me as coming from Gombe. Mm. And then he summoned me to say that I should go and get, pack my things and follow him uh, to my degree. Mm. And I told him, I, I have a contract appointment, so mm. I cannot go without permission. He said, you, you will go by, <laughs> you will go with me, permission or no. We so will get you found a doctor from, from the Northeast here yes, in Ibadan. Yes, mm. so uh, he was actually very, very excited. And he never let me off, really. I didn't follow him the, for the yeah. next day. I yeah. had to find permission. Yeah. But I went to my degree with permission. And as soon as I got there, he got me ad, uh, appointed as a medical officer grade two mm -hmm. with a promise that I will immediately be sponsored to go abroad. Mm -hmm. And I told him I've already got a place to go, so only the sponsorship is outstanding. Mm -hmm. So he spoke to them. Uh, I don't know who it was exactly, the Civil Service Commission, mm -hmm. because I was then an officer yeah. uh, of the state government. And uh, I was, I was given. Uh, well, it's a, it's, a, it's not a scholarship, but sponsorship, mm. because I went with my salary mm. for initially for two years. It's like an in-service. Yes, in-service yeah. training, yeah. where the crown agents mm. in London were paying my salary. Mm. Uh, at that time, it was fifty-six pounds mm. per month but quite adequate mm. uh, in those days. Were you then in the UK with your family? Did you move with family? No, I went, I, went, I, went, young... I went as a, as a single person. You're still a bachelor. Person, a bachelor. Mm. But after, after a few years, as a, I think it was in my third year in the UK, mm. I received a letter from the late Isa Kaita, who mm. was Minister of Education mm. in the North, to the effect that uh, my wife, whose photographs they included mm. in the letter, was coming to London on a particular date, and I should go to Heathrow Airport and, and receive her. I had never known her before, mm. but they were afraid because I don't know who gave the impression that I was going to marry an English woman. Mm which I was never going to do mm. because I never fancied them. Mm. So here I was, a bachelor, not expecting a wife because I wanted to finish all my postgraduate training. Mm. I had finished, by the way, with Nottingham in two years. Yes. But before I left, I had been, uh, my, the, my professor in Nottingham said to me, now what are you going to do mm. after the membership? I said, I will go back home. He said, but if you are going back home, shouldn't you study some other uh, discipline that will help you uh, practice medicine better mm. in those environments? I said, such as what, sir? He said, such as something that will help you in infectious disease, like immunology. Mm. I said, sir, I have always wanted to do immunology, but I know that there is no chance mm. of me getting a place. Mm. He said, do you want to do immunology or not? I said, yes, sir. 
And again, within two weeks, he said to me, I have found you an appointment as a medical research fellow in immunology in the UK Medical Research Council uh, at one hospital in, uh, in, in Berkshire. Mm. So that's how I studied medicine. Mm. And as soon as I got to the MRC laboratories, they, were, they assigned me a subject, mm. which inevitably had to lead to a higher degree. Mm. At that time, uh, I registered for a PhD. Mm. But through the, uh, the research program, which was mostly clinical and laboratory, mm. but mostly laboratory, but on patients with rheumatic disorders, mm. uh, where immuno immunological phenomena played an important role. Mm. And by the time I had done one and a half years, my boss said to me, you know, you have gathered enough data now for two postgraduate thesis. Mm. So without consulting him, I decided I was going to do an MD, which I will submit to the University of Ibadan, and then the PhD, which I had already registered for, mm. and I had already been awarded the MPhil. Mm. So when I wrote the first chapter of my MD thesis, mm. I didn't say it was an MD. I just gave him to him. I said, sir, this is my, the introduction to my thesis. And he sat on it for two months. Mm. And I realized that, because when I asked the secretary, she said he hasn't even opened it. Mm. So I just kept quiet mm. and went on with the rest of the chapters and produced the complete thesis, mm. which I printed and handed to the University of Ibadan after, of course, informing them that I would like to submit my MD. The process then was very simple. Mm. You apply that you, you want to do a, a, an MD and you are doing a research Which project. is like a PhD in medicine, right? Yes. An MD. Yes. Mm. But PhD with clinical uh, bias, bias mm. towards patient care. Mm. Yes. So that's how I... I got my yeah. Doctor of Medicine degree by mm. research mm. of the University of Ibadan mm. again. Mm. But there were problems, there were problems with that uh, MD, mm. although there were some, some surprising things. Mm. Well, let me start with the surprise first. Mm. I flew to Ibadan, a date was given to me for the defense of the thesis. Mm. From England? Uh, you flew from England? Yes, I flew from England. Mm. And uh, the following day after I arrived in Ibadan, I went to see one Professor Adeni, whom I served as house officer before I went abroad, mm. just to say hello to him. Mm. And I was just in the middle of discussing with him when I had somebody coming from behind saying, uh, Ade, referring to Adeni, mm. why did you people have to waste my time asking me to come all the way to Ibadan to examine this thesis? Mm. This thesis does not need to be defended. Mm. This thesis is too good to be defended. Mm. Then I saw Adeni they showing, this, showing him that the <laughs> candidate is here, <laughs> is listening to you. <laughs> so when he saw me, uh, I didn't know he was going to be the external He's another professor from, professor from London. Mm. He's a professor from the University of London, professor mm. of immunology. Mm. And one of the most difficult examiners, mm. I should say, in immunology, mm. because my predecessors in the Medical Research Council, my predecessor in the project I was doing, had to rewrite his thesis two times before this external examiner passed him. He's a white man? Yes, mm. Professor Sutil. Mm. So they dispatched me away, and uh, mm. the following morning was the drama that happened. Mm. Because when I went in for the examination, uh, the head of the department introduced the three well introduced the three examiners to me: two internal examiners and Professor Sutil from London. And uh, the first question I was asked was by an immunologist uh, at the University of Ibadan. 
and uh, he was angry that throughout the cities I did not quote one paper written by one uh, one lady who was the wife of Professor late Professor Tam David West. Mm. Having to, you have it was on what is called tropical splenomegaly syndrome. Mm. Haven't you heard of the work of this doctor from the University of Ibadan on this subject? Mm. I said, I have, sir. Mm. He said, but you haven't quoted her. Mm. So I brought out my box of references. Mm. I said, I didn't quote her because I had made too many references on this subject, and I wanted to include only five. And her own was not among the best five, and I brought it out. Mm. The, the reference itself mm. from my box. Mm. And the external examiner took it and gave it to him, asking him, is it the reference? He said, yes. He said, all right, um, uh, doctor, just go out and tell the secretary to tell this on a piece of paper, mm. cut it and paste it below here, mm. which I did. And as soon as I came and resubmitted, mm. the external examiner just stood up and said, uh, and stretch his hand, mm. saying congratulations. Nobody asked me any other question. So the, this, the defense of the thesis, that should have taken three to four hours, mm. was completed in five minutes. Mm. So after returning to the departmental, through the departmental office to go out, mm. there was pandemonium in the office because they they were wondering what had happened. Mm. Why was I dismissed so mm. early? The cities were rejected before it was uh, defended. Before it was defended, mm. I said I don't know. But the external examiner said congratulations. Why is she came me? Mm. So I went away, and uh, indeed I received a letter to the effect that uh, the defence had been successful. Mm. But then I think everybody then got to know mm. in the University of Ibadan that. Somebody had defended an MD thesis in five minutes. Mm. You touch on the story while you're in the UK of um, your wife saying, I mean, coming to join you. Yes. Uh, we, we didn't quite conclude that. Yes. Did well, you really go to Heathrow I, and what, I, what happened? I, I went to Heathrow mm. to receive her, mm. but they wouldn't let her out until they saw me. Mm. And there was no way I could have entered I could be allowed to enter and to the arrival uh, immigration area without going through the departure area. Mm. So they refused to allow me to go in. Mm. In the end, after they had waited and waited for nearly one hour mm. and they didn't see me, mm. they had to send one of them to the arrival area to mm. come and announce mm. that one Dr. Idris Mohammed is required at the information desk. Mm. And I got there and he allowed me, he, he, he accompanied me to, to the immigration officer holding my wife at the time. Mm. So uh, that's how we were allowed to, she was allowed to come in with me and we drove to Nottingham. And this is, this is you are seeing her for the first time? Yes. At that point. Who, who, who arranged this uh, marriage? Well, my friends, arranged it and uh, the former uh, Basa of Awadu Bello University, Dr. Hamza Zayad, uh, who facilitated my early departure from Nigeria to the UK. Mm. Because as Basa, he got the ABU to take responsibility for my transportation and the first few months of my salary before the ones of my degree started coming in. Mm. He was the principal person, but then the late uh, Dauda Birma, who was a one-time mm. minister of education mm. and a classmate of mine, mm. uh, paid the dowry mm. in, 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 in Kaduna. Mm. So this was an arranging Gombe? It was no, so it was in Kaduna. 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 Mm. Because she was the stepdaughter of Isa Kaita at the time. No. It was a Katrina yes. marriage. Yes, mm. that's right. Mm. Now, after UK 78, uh, thereabout, you, you came back to Nigeria. Yes. Were you then committed to continue in Meduguri, which had recruited no, I, you? I, I didn't. By that time, 
uh, Northeast had been uh, broken up into three. Mm. Borno, Gongola, and Bauchi. So I reported to Bauchi coming from Gombe. Mm. Gombe being part of Bauchi State at the time. Right. So I reported to Bauchi uh, State Civil Service Commission. Mm. And uh, in, in fulfillment of my promise mm. to return home and serve mm. before uh, leaving for academia. Mm. So I was posted to the State Ministry of Health, mm. where I was uh, I, where I continued my appointment as medical officer, grade two, mm -hmm. despite three additional qualifications that mm -hmm. I obtained mm -hmm. from the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, member of the Royal College of Physicians, doctor of medicine, mm -hmm. diploma in tropical medicine and hygiene. Mm -hmm. Despite those additional qualifications and uh, three years after my appointment of medical officer grade two, I was continued on grade level eight salary for, for nearly a year mm. before I was, the, my appointment was reviewed mm. to a, a chief medical officer, mm. grade level 15 mm. with areas that's of quite, over That's one quite year. a jump. Yes. Almost yes. Do, uh, double A they from took, A to yeah, They took cognizance of my clinical research work in the UK because that's the advantage of an MD over a PhD. Mm. If it was just pure PhD, it would have been simply research work. Mm. No connection, no direct connection with patients. Right. But I was looking after patients and conducting the research on them at the same time. So they took advantage of that, that I was practicing. And also in Nottingham, before I became a member of the Royal College of Physicians, it was a purely clinical training mm. before I went to do the research work mm. in the Medical Research Council Immunology Unit. So they took that into cognizance and added the three years, no, it's not even three years, I spent five years in the UK. Mm. They added those five years to and also the additional qualifications mm. to determine that I should have been, there was one Indian, Dr. Sajid, mm. uh, who was very nice, mm. exceedingly nice and friendly with me. So I was appointed to take over from him mm. as he decided to retire yeah. voluntarily himself. Yeah. You eventually became PAMSEC of the Ministry of, of Health? Yes. I was promoted chief medical officer in 1978, end of 1978. But in 1979, after the civilian government came in, mm. the civilian governor, uh, Aladi Tatari Ali, mm. summoned me one day to say, it is, I'm going to make you permanent secretary tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So I said to him, thank you very much, sir. But I will not take my oath of allegiance tomorrow. I will not take it until you send me for training in administrative and financial management. Mm. And then all the people there were, were, were exceedingly surprised. Mm. And later on, I got to hear uh, uh, rumors around about you that there is one silly man who was offered the job of permanent secretary, but he says he will not take it until he was sent to other training. Mm. But what Tatari Ali did, he laughed along with the others and said, you will take you, I will, I will send you for training in administrative and financial management, but you will first of all take your oath tomorrow. Mm. So I said, all right, your excellency. So, and he fulfilled his, uh, his promise mm. by sending me to Cambridge Centre for Management Development mm. in Cambridge, mm. where we, along with some other Nigerians, we undertook training in financial and administrative management, mm. a certificate course. Yeah. Now, at what point did you leave the civil service and more or less return to your natural habitat, the academia. Yes, 
I had told uh, the governor, Alhaji Tatari Ali, that I returned to Bauchi to serve for three years. A promise I made to myself that unlike some people who refused to return to their state, I went straight to academia. I will at least give three years service to the state government before transferring to ABU at the time, being the only medical school mm. in the north. Mm. So Tata really understood it very well. And uh, we processed my request through the secretary to the government, and Tata really approved it. As they forwarded it to the Civil Service Commission, but the Civil Service Commission refused to approve it, uh, saying that I was trained at public expense. I had spent only three years. They would not release me until I spent another two. Mm. Five years, equivalent yeah. to your training. Yes, mm. so Tata really summoned me to say, the Civil Service Commission has refused your transfer to ABU, but don't mind them. They don't know that the new constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria vests powers on me as the governor of Bauchi State regarding all these uh, mm. uh, approvals. So just ignore them and go to ABU. So I went, and it was not until 12 months before the transfer certificate came through. So you left permanent secretary to go back and oh, be a lecturer? Oh, yes. And then that's another uh, surprise that people thought it was surprising. I didn't think so. Mm. Even though I had lost three years of uh, academic promotion, mm. because uh, my colleagues who returned uh, immediately after, after postgraduate training not necessarily in medicine, were promoted after three years of mm. returning. Mm. But at the time I applied to transfer my service to ABU, based on my publications, they offered me a uh, reader, mm. subject to external assessment, of mm. course. I understand from people who were in academic and promotions committee that in particular, the late uh, Dr. Yusuf Bala mm. and uh, Professor Bufo Bajoga, who were in the Appointments and Promotions Committee at ABU, protested that uh, I should have been appointed professor straight away based on my publications. Mm. Because they said there were people with six publications or less mm. being promoted professor along at, at the same session of the AMP committee mm. while I had 16. Mm. So, but in their wisdom, the appointments and promotions committee settled on reader. Mm. Many people expected that I would not accept it, but mm. I did. Reader is next to professor anyway. It's like associate reader, professor. Yes, mm. that's right. But ABU did not accept the term associate professor, mm. and uh, I didn't mind. I got to ABU as a reader on grade level 15, as a reader pending assessment. Mm. So I assumed duty on grade level 12, 14, mm. 12 or 14, mm. which is uh, four years below permanent secretary. The demotion. Yeah. Mm. And uh, a week after I had assumed duty, one professor, Ed B. Atta, who was the head of the Department of Pathology, came to my office to say he wanted to see this man who abandoned the post of permanent secretary to come and take a job on level 13. Level 13 it was mm. at the time. Mm. Leaving all the parks of uh, public, uh, as a permanent secretary in the mm. public service to come to the impoverished climate of academia. Mm. So I said I didn't consider it uh, anything because mm. I think that my interest is paramount mm. over, over financial gain. So that was, but mercifully, my external assessment only took three months. Mm. So I was only on grade level 13 for only three months. Mm. 
So I was then promoted. I was, I was paid by ACL uh, up to level 15. But when it came to the promotion as professor, mm. the next promotion, the next year I was due for promotion based on my publications. Mm. But there were two of us uh, ready for promotion at the time, mm. ready in inverted commas. Mm. But there was only one vacancy in the Department of Medicine. Mm. So the head of the department summoned me to say, he was appealing to me to drop my, my, my hope of becoming professor. Mm. Because he was sure if he forwarded the two names, the appointments and promotions committee will pick me and leave the other person. Mm. So I said there was no problem. And that was how it was made. The next year, I was forwarded and it was approved. So and you, had to, you had to wait? Yes, I waited. Year. I told the head of the department there was no problem. Mm. But I believe, sir, you didn't stay too long in uh, ABU, but moved to the University of Medjugorje. Uh, I wonder why. Yes, that's true. Mm. Um, at the time I returned, I joined ABU, there was no medical school in my degree. Um, however, by 1976, seven new medical schools were established by the National University Commission, of which my degree was one, but it was not functional. Then Professor Jivre Aminu was appointed vice chancellor. And uh, there are no prizes for getting that he will get the College of Medical Sciences up and going. Mm. The problem that he had no professor of medicine. So he came to the ABU to interact with the vice chancellor at the time, Professor Angu Abdullahi, mm. to beg him to release me on secondment for two years. Did he know about you from Ibadan? Because he oh, was yes. another alumni oh, yes. of... I met him in Ibadan. Mm. He was four years ahead of me. Mm. And uh, he, did, he did his house job also in Ibadan, mm. and senior house job. Mm. And it was from Ibadan that he went to the UK. Mm. And uh, so you almost I follow, have, I follow you, you are following him. The same, mm. uh, yes, the same route. Mm. Angu Abdullahi told Professor Aminu that he had just lost his dean of the Faculty of Medicine, and I was the deputy dean. Mm. He didn't feel comfortable to let me go. Mm. But then the argument Professor Aminu made was that, firstly, ABU had other professors of medicine, mm. along with other grades of mm. academic people in the Faculty of Medicine. Mm. Whereas in the University of Medjugorje, there was not a single Nigerian professor of medicine. Mm. And the NUC was insisting that there should be a professor in every department. Mm. In fact, preferably two. Mm. But they were prepared to have one before giving full accreditation mm. to the College of Medical Sciences in the University of Medjugorje. Mm. So Professor Aminu appealed to me personally and uh, although I had my own reservations, I didn't want to go to my degree. Mm. I felt it was, it was a kind of responsible thing to do, mm. to respond to his request. Yeah. At least if it is going to be for only two years. Mm. Unfortunately, or I don't know whether it's, I should say, fortunately or unfortunately, mm. after one year was the time I received a letter from the Federal Minister of Health. Mm that the head of state would like to appoint me chief medical director in the University of Medjugorje mm. Teaching Hospital. Mm. So I couldn't say no to a head of state's mm. uh, uh, request, mm. which came, the letter was signed by the permanent secretary. Mm. At the time, Dahiru Muhammad, who was governor of Bauchi State, the mm. late Dahiru Muhammad. Mm. So I replied that I was willing to accept it. Mm. Although Professor Zivre Aminu was most unhappy, mm. although I was not leaving my degree, mm. he gave me a condition mm. that 
I should continue to attend Senate and teach. I said, mm. but of course, I was appointed along with 11 others mm. in August 1985 mm. as the foundation chief medical officer, chief medical director, mm. stroke chief executive. Mm. What one noticeable thing about your career, especially comparing it to Professor Jibril Aminu, another doctor from Ibadan, is that you never made it to the political post of the vice chancellor. I wonder if what, what happened then? Because here you are professor of medicine, you are also provost of the medical college. Uh, in many ways, this is almost like what Jibril Aminu did, but you, you didn't become vice chancellor. Yes, I think that's the will of Almighty Allah. I believe uh, you finished your tenure as the provost in the medical uh, college uh, around 1999. Yes. What have you been doing since then? It's quite, quite a long time. Yes. Um, as soon as I finished being provost of the College of Medical Sciences, I was given one year sabbatical leave. So I decided at that time, uh, by that time, uh, the late Abacha had established the National Program on Immunization, mm. where Professor Omar Shehu who was the chairman. Mm. So I went to him to say that I would like to spend my sabbatical in the immunization agency mm. because of my background mm. and training, yes. and also to help them yes. establish immunization on a firm basis. So in 1999, I moved to Abuja to serve. They appointed me a consultant mm. to the National Program on Immunization. Mm. And, uh, but they gave me, Professor Shehu and myself decided on my work plan. Mm. Professor Shehu retired from that job? I mean, or he, he left the no, job? No, I served four years. Yes. Mm. I served two, up to 2004. Mm. And I didn't want to continue mm. uh, for personal reasons. Mm. Let me take you to another aspect of your life. Uh, I mean, of course, you have been not only on that uh, program of immunization where you are the national chair, you have been on many other committees, many. I've seen the CV. But one other noticeable thing is the awards. I did mention one or two in the introduction. Which one are you most I won't say proud, but happy with of the, of the awards. Which one brought you more money, if, if there is money to these awards? Well, none more, of them brought anything. More, more <laughs> renowned. <laughs> well, uh, one of them brought uh, one million naira, but... Uh, that's a national... National, national order of marriage. Just one million. <laughs> yes. But that's one they, million they, of many years they ago. They have raised right? it to 10 or 20 now. Yes. This um, was 2007. This was 2007. Right. But uh, uh, that award is the highest award yes. in academic and intellectual performance. Yes. And uh, that led to, I think, what is the most uh, appreciated by me, mm. the inclusion in the University of Ibadan College of Medicine mm. Wall of Laureates and uh, mm. Fellows. Yes, mm. and Fellows, mm. uh, where there are only 14 mm. of us. Mm. So I appreciate that as, as the highest. Mm. It seems you are the only northern, about the, or at least uh, from the far north here. Well, I the see list, a name that the uh, list of 14 shows me as the only northern. Mm. Yes. But after that one, the, before that one, of course, I was a fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Science mm. uh, since 1990. Mm. And uh, more recently, in the last uh, three years, of course, they had introduced an academy, Nigerian Academy of Medicine, mm. and Nigerian Academy of Medicine Specialties. Mm. Uh, both of which I'm a member of. Mm. So, fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Science, fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Medicine, fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Medicine Specialties. Mm. 
But if you are talking about uh, abroad, uh, being a fellow of the Royal Society of Medicine mm. like, since the 1980s, mm. and uh, more recently, about four years ago, they made me a life fellow mm. of the Royal Society of Medicine. Mm. And of course, other, apart from those societies, mm. uh, I'm a member of professional associations, quite mm. a few of them. Mm. British Medical Association, mm -hmm. British Society for Immunology, mm -hmm. and their Nigerian counterparts. Yeah. Do this, all these associations, committees, do they keep you busy really day to day? Are you still in your early 80s? As, as, busy, as, mm. as busy as you want to be. As busy as you want to be. I don't respond to many invitations to take part in an activity nowadays, mm. Mm. particularly if it involves uh, traveling, mm. because it's difficult to travel from Gombe mm. to anywhere, in fact. Mm. Even from Gombe to, Gombe to Bauchi, mm. it's a hassle mm. now. Mm. That has restricted my, mm. my activities. Mm. In fact, that is to the benefit of Gombe State, mm. because uh, whilst I was uh, there, I was appointed chairman of the Pro Chancellor and Chairman of the Governing Council of the University, mm. and so we established a College of Medicine, mm. which has now graduated three sets mm. uh, successfully. Mm. And in fact, I believe that this week the Medical and Dental Council is visiting Gombe mm. for reaccreditation, mm. and this whole time they hope to get full accreditation. Mm. So both the university and the well, while I was there, after establishing uh, the, the College of Medical Sciences, mm. by the time they were to come to clinical training, we needed a teaching hospital. Uh, and there was a purpose-built federal medical center. In fact, the only purpose-built one in Nigeria mm. was built by African Development Bank mm. to the standard of any teaching hospital. Mm. So we appealed to the Federal Ministry of Health to turn it into a federal teaching hospital mm. so that the students of Gombe State University will be trained there. Right. And the president approved it. Mm. So the federal teaching hospital in Gombe and the university, Gombe State University, have been benefiting. Mm. But even before we started medicine, when I retired to Gombe, mm. I offered to provide clinical service to the federal medical, federal medical center mm. uh, without charge. Mm. But in their own wisdom, the board decided that they needed to give me an appointment to make my activities legal mm. in the hospital because mm. in case there is uh, any medical legal issue, mm. uh, nobody will question that I was not a staff of the hospital. Mm. So they appointed me honorary consultant mm. physician mm. and uh, uh, decided on a small monthly stipend mm which they have been paying up to now. Yeah. So does that keep you busy? Do you really yeah, go to the hospital? I, 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 do my, I do my weekly, twice weekly ward round. Mm. Anytime I'm in Gombe. Mm. And uh, now that, of course, there are clinical students, mm. I, give, I give them lectures. Mm. And the lectures take place in the, in the hospital. Mm. So... Um, I am supposed to be in the hospital every day. Mm. You are 81. Do you, you still have time and the energy to do ward rounds and uh, oh, yes. all those uh, clinical things? Yes, um, I do. Mm. I do. Despite the fact that uh, a sequel to a bathroom accident I had in Saudi Arabia, mm. my hip is held by metal. Mm. But it doesn't stop me from standing or walking. Mm. Or the only thing is that uh, I cannot walk three miles. So Otherwise, how is your normal day? You know, I mean, somebody who has been all over the place, now you are confined to Gombe. How do you spend your typical days there? I managed to visit one or two people. Mm. As in Eastern Gombe, do you have any particular uh, role in the community or palace? Is that something well, that... Uh, not, not really, mm. not really, although... Uh, theoretically, the Emir can give you any assignment. Mm. 
uh, but these days there are not many assignments going on. Mm -hmm. Assignments within Gombe town itself are mostly undertaken by Yerima Gombe, mm -hmm. uh, who is the district head for Gombe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he deputizes for the Emir most of the time. Mm -hmm. And he's the stepfather of the Emir. Mm -hmm. But in due deference to his opinion, mm -hmm. He refused to confess for the post of Emir when his senior brother died, mm. Shehu Abu Bakr. Mm. He said he could not compete with his children mm. to become Emir. Mm. He would rather leave it to them, mm. uh, which most people appreciate. Mm. So um, how is family life for you? Is it, is, is, uh, you have a large family? Not bad, not mm. bad, mm. not bad. Mm. Um, of course, with time going on now, mm. uh, the, most of the children, uh, the girls are married. Mm. The boys have graduated mm. and taken up jobs mm. elsewhere. Mm. And uh, only two of them are undergoing training here. Mm. Uh, two boys, mm. one in Bayes University, the other mm. in Nile University. Mm. Uh, doing architecture and mm. uh, civil engineering, respectively. Mm. So family life is fine. Mm. But with, with me confined to the home most of the time, mm. uh, there's no problem now. Do you feel kind of neglected by the government? Or are you really satisfied the way they consult and uh, seek your own input into policy? Not, not really. Mm. As I said, being confined to Gombe State mm. means that when you talk about government uh, engaging me, mm. you are talking about Gombe State government. Mm. And they do, in fact, over-engage me. Mm. Do you have any Hobbies? What do you do in your private time? I saw something about snooker. So I want, I <laughs> that wonder. was a long time ago. <laughs> okay. uh, at Ibadan mm. and the UK, mm. I did snooker a lot. So you don't do those things anymore? No. In any case, the snooker tables are not available where I am. <laughs> yes. There was none in my degree while I was there. Mm. I don't know if there is now. Yeah. And there are none in Gombe. Mm. Although I have seen some, uh, some adolescents mm. improvising tables and using sticks yeah. and balls to do snooker. Yeah. Well, thank you, Professor Idris Mohammed, for this uh, time you gave us to have an insight into your life. And viewers, I hope uh, you enjoyed this yes. conversation yes. with Professor Idris Mohammed, who, as you heard, has really lived a long and rich life in the profession of medicine. Until another time, thank you and uh, goodbye.